Today we're going to take a look at the Angular 2 to-do list and how to save data to SharePoint. For that we're going to be looking at the SP CRUD library. This is something that I wrote for Angular 1 as a plain JavaScript file and now I've rewritten as a TypeScript file for Angular 2 and higher. And here you can see it has dependencies on Angular Core, Angular HTTP, RxJS Observable, Catch, MEP, and 2Promise. This library contains a number of methods for inserting items, deleting items, updating items, and reading items. What we're going to use it for is to save the data from our to-do list app into a SharePoint list. The first thing we need to do is create a SharePoint list to receive the data. Here we're going to select custom list and provide a name, JSON to-do, and we'll hit create. From there we're going to open the settings for the list and we're going to add a new column. The new column is named JSON, multiple lines of text, as plain text only. Alright, our new list has been created and we can see we have both columns available. In the To Do app, we're able to add and remove data so we can interact, more ideas, archive things, and even modify the values that are there. What we'd like to do is add a save button. So if we go over to our source code for our Angular app, and this was created with the Angular CLI, over here in the app component TS, the first thing we need to do is import the spcrud library. So we're going to import spcrud from dot slash spcrud. The file is located in the same folder right here, so we can use the dot slash notation for where to reference the source. We don't need to add the dot TS, same thing as any other import statement. On the component decorator, we need to add providers, and with side of here, give it the spcrud object that is being imported. So we're importing spcrud with a capital S, that's the name of the class being exported, so we're using capital, first letter caps. This is the file name that we're reading it from, and then here's a dependency on that object. With those in place, we want to come down here to the class itself and put together a constructor. Constructor will have private sp crud, sp crud, and inside of there, we're going to execute spcrud.setBaseURL and provide it the reference to the SharePoint site where we want to save our data. Right now we're running this in Angular CLI's development localhost server at localhost 4200, so we need to tell it the address of the SharePoint site where we're planning on saving data. If it were embedded in a SharePoint page, you could call setBaseURL with no parameters and that would do auto detect for the URL of the current SharePoint site. However, because we're running it on the local HTTP server, localhost 4200, we need to give it the full address so it knows where to save data. Part done, we need to create a method to save data. Here we're going to make a method called save list with a constant that references this, the, the current class. And then we're going to make a call with our spcrud object to JSON write. Now this wants to take in the name of a list and a body of JSON to save. The list we're going to be writing to is called JSON to do. The object we're going to be writing is this dot to do's. That's the list of data. And this is promise notation, so we're going to have a dot then with a function to receive the response. And we're going to say status equals response. In the view itself, we're going to go ahead and add a couple of tags here. And at the bottom, we're going to have a button with a click event that goes to save list. Label that as our save button. And underneath it, we're going to have status. And we'll display that as JSON. So now we have a save button we have a list and we've got some data. Now just in case we're going to open F12, clear out the network, clear out the console, we'll go ahead and click the button and see what we get. 
from there we can see a network call made to context info and a couple of breakpoints being hit continue continue and now we see a status coming back <clears throat> of items parenthesis one that's the first item in a list what SharePoint will do when we create an item is it will actually echo back that item and return it to us here we can see the title is system and the JSON is this body of data right there. If we go over to our SharePoint view and reload, we'll see one row with a title called System and then a JSON field with all the data from our application. Currently we're logged in as System account, so the title field is the name of the current user. If you had multiple user accounts, you would see all the usernames in the title column. This gives us a way to put Angular widgets on SharePoint pages, but then save and persist the data with a primary key. So you're logged in as one user, you want to see your information, save your preferences, and you can interact with multiple components on a page. And each one of them could save back to a different list where the current user is a primary key. Of course, it doesn't have to be that way. That's just an example of the JSON write method. The SP CRUD library comes with another a number of other methods for reading, writing, updating, and deleting list items in general. It also includes methods for uploading files, creating folders, attachments, and even setting up list schema like creating fields. So there's a number of things in here. It's meant to be a wrapper for HTTP that provides the HTTP headers and formatting, the post endpoint URLs, and just makes SharePoint easier to work with. In the case here where we were writing to a list, a number of things happened because technically that's referred to as an, an upsert. So if I put new data here, and added more to my list and hit save, I'm actually going to update the item that's out there, not create, because there's one already in existence. So if we refresh, we can see that we have new data and it updated the row that was already out there. So with that single function call for JSON write, we're actually able to handle both insert and update scenarios. That what it's going to do is pull the list, it'll know who is the current user, and then it'll make a decision to either insert or update as appropriate. But you don't have to worry about those things. This single method, JSON write, also handles the digest token. So when we're posting to write to a SharePoint list or an update, we need to get a request digest token. That's being handled in the background as part of the SP CRUD library. And here you can see the code where we first refresh a digest token, we attempt to read the list, we will create it if missing, and we will update if it's found. So there's a number of nested function calls that are happening, but the only thing we need to input is the name of the list and a JavaScript object we want to save. Very easy to use. And from a code perspective, we have the method to handle saving, a constructor that connects us to our site, and then an import for SP CRUD. So when you start new components in Angular 2, or I guess Angular so when you start new components in Angular 2 or higher, the only thing you really need to do is add your import statement, add the provider, put a constructor down with a private variable, set a base URL, and then start using the library. So we're importing it, explaining the dependency, connecting our SharePoint site, and then we're ready to start using the library. For me, this is a lot easier to work with than setting up all the HTTP gets and posts one at a time. There's a number of filters being used here with title equals. We're selecting back certain fields that we need. We're doing headers for merge and if match on the updates. There's a read builder for read filter operations where we can do top, skip, expand, order by, filter, and select. All of that's easy to work with and in TypeScript aware. We have a number of other methods that I mentioned like attaching files, folders, creating fields, creating a list, ensuring that a user exists on the local web. But all of these REST API endpoints are now wrapped in a method with a minimal number of parameters that makes it easier to use. And if a request digest is needed or some other dependency, the library will handle that for us. So for me, importing the SP CRUD library, then writing down the provider, bringing it in with a constructor, makes it a lot easier to work with SharePoint lists from Angular 2 and higher. So here you can see we have our application. 
we're saving data. The inverse, of course, would be to change the load method to read the data and hydrate the application when it first loads so that we're not starting from scratch every time, but rather we're looking up the row for the current user and presenting it. That's a good intro to the SP CRUD library and how to use it with Angular CLI. Thanks for watching.